Now, now, you've decided to try this Upwork thing, right? How to land your first Upwork job? You might have probably asked yourself whether it's not overhyped by now and whether you can still make money there and the truth is somewhere in between. You definitely can make money on Upwork, a full-time living, however, there is a limit of rates you can offer to your clients on Upwork. This might be my sad experience, but a tiny percent of people get over 50 hours per hour on Upwork. The median of higher rates on Upwork is like $40 per hour. Even the Upwork itself, the company, is unwilling to pay more than $40 per hour and that is for a senior specialist and they are unwilling to go above this price, above this rate, $40 per hour. So yes, there is a limit to what you can earn and I'm speaking from experience here because we have worked with Upwork itself, the company, and they were unwilling to negotiate and to change the terms. But the resume is Yes, you can still earn an Upwork a full-time living, so the question is, how do you start? And before I tell you this, consider subscribing if you're new here. We talk all sorts of IT and online businesses and careers here. Hit the like button if you like this video so far, and let's begin. I won't be discovering America here, so for those people who are looking for a magical pill, I've got bad news for you. You have to do the job, you have to do it right, and you have to be persistent. And by the way, before we jump into the first step you have to take in order to get your first job on Upwork in 2022, make sure that you put this playlist in a separate tab and watch it later, because this playlist is all about Upwork. Now, given that you already have a profile, you have it registered, and you have it confirmed, because the confirmation might be pain on Upwork, and they have their registration process quite complicated where you have to confirm that this is you, that you have to confirm your address by sending them your bills from to that address and so on and so forth, some crazy stuff. But given that you have already gone through all of this, the very basic thing you will need to do is to fill out your profile right. And let me dwell a little on this. Because even though many people will be like, what? Are you kidding me? I know how to fill in my profile, right? Let me assure you, it's not the truth for many people. Like, I thought I knew how to fill in my profile too, but then after several years of applying on Upwork on behalf of my team and on behalf of myself, I realized certain things that I have been doing wrong. I noticed that certain profiles of my team members are performing better than the others. So what do these best performing profiles have in common? And no, this is not a great photo, though it also influences the decision of your potential customer. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, so here are three top performing profiles that I have in my Upwork team. This is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. And you can notice this first thing, they are fully filled in, meaning that they uh, have full description and we will come back to the description a little bit later. The education, all the certificates, uh, all the work history, uh, not only education, but also owners, awards, courses, so everything that you have worked on, every single reward that you have got, put that in. All of this, the work history, uh, the languages, the education, all of this is important. The next thing that is important is the profile pictures, more like professional, like, I know this is basics, but you will be surprised how many people don't follow this simple rule. Be professional on Upwork. This is what you have come here for, for business. So it's the same way as on LinkedIn. Don't put your, you know, photos in bikinis or on, in cowboy hats, in uh, sunglasses, professional photos only. And now the most important part is the description. Not many clients will go and look through your entire profile, but what will they see immediately is your profile. And I want uh, to show you here how the description of the top performing profiles in my team are structured. And you can see that we don't write a novel here, something like I have worked as a software engineer for several decades and I have made a great influence on my projects. No, straight away all these skills, the core skills that they have, frameworks, platforms, programming languages, web technologies, projects that a person has worked on. Here the same thing, skills like 
NLTK, Pemorphy, Python, Java, blah, 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 databases, blah, 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 projects, education, courses, which a person took and so on and so forth. That's how you trigger your potential customers. You indicate in uh, your description skills that would trigger your potential customers. For example, I need a person who will develop me something on Ruby on Rails. So I will be looking specifically for this, you know, Ruby on Rails. I have it in my head that I need a person who knows Ruby on Rails. So I will be looking or some specific framework. So I will be looking for that in their description rather than how great they are. I don't care how great they are. I will find that out on our first interview if there will be one but firstly I want to understand what is their skills tag and you want to indicate the skills tag straight in your description yes you will you have a, a separate section uh, where is it uh, where you indicate your skills and they here here they are skills but you see they are in the end of your profile and not many customers will get to the end of your profile if they don't see what they are looking for right in the description they will go away so trigger your potential customers and put these skills your course skills straight away the next thing you want to do is to apply right during the first probably weeks of you searching your first job on upwork you should be super active on upwork you should be applying constantly you should be responding immediately you should search for relevant jobs and so on and so forth because upwork algorithms will notice your activities on the platform and will even send you invites without you having to spend money on connects and on applying and yes you will have to spend some money on applying because uh, in 2020 i presume upwork changed their policy and now you have to pay to apply to certain jobs okay i'm shutting up and just showing you how to apply right Okay, so how do you apply? So let's say that you have found uh, a project that you want to apply to. So firstly, you can see the activity on this job, how many proposals, when it was last viewed by the client nine minutes ago. It's great. It means that the customer is active. And the bid range, I can see the bid range because I have a premium account on Upwork. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to apply on behalf of my uh, people see how I do that. I just copy the entire description. I go to submit a proposal. Firstly, of course, I read this description and I understand that my um, engineer can do this job. And let me apply on behalf of this freelancer. And let me go straight here. Firstly, I see that there is, uh, let me go back to the job posting, I see that there is no um, name. So the, the client is, the payment method is not verified, meaning that they don't have any Upwork experience and hence they don't have any feedback from the freelancers, which is bad, but okay, just for the sake of the video. So I don't know how to address them. They haven't indicated their name in the job description. So I, I say just hi, but if there is a name, you better uh, include that. Hi, thank you for posting. That's the first thing you should say. Uh, the next thing is, um, I'd be interested in helping you with, and then you go with uh, the things that they are specifically mentioning in their job description, and that is tagging and annotation. And then I um, specify, so this is, uh, do I understand correctly? And the data prepared for your ML team. This, this question shows that you have read the description and you understand what they want. And they understand that you have read the description, so probably you might be a fit. Also, how would you like me to monitor, monitor and um, analyze all the conversational bots? And again, I've used the exactly same words as they used in their job description. See what I'm doing? And then you express the readiness, ready to jump on a call if required. And of course, you say something nice in the end, like best regards. 
and that's how you close your conversation. So you saw what I did. I used exactly the same words that they used in their job description and I just like played around with them so that to confirm that A, I read their description, B, I understand what they want and C, I already have questions to uh, clarify and to specify some tiny details so they are already interested and they are already willing to answer to those questions like they have a question they need to answer and that's how the conversation will start the next thing you want to do is to respond straight away when either invites come or your clients respond to your applications and the response time matters again for upwork algorithms because they will notice your activeness and your response rate and they will send you more and more invites again without you having to spend anything on connects and the next thing you might want to be considering is to improve your profile constantly like i already mentioned i thought that i knew how to apply enough work because yes i got some jobs and yes my team members got some jobs because mostly i've been not working myself actively on the platform but I applied on behalf of my people, so I thought that I knew everything, but then I tweaked some profiles and I made some changes and I noticed one thing in common that made uh, the response rate from the clients way better. And also some basic advice here, don't throw tomatoes at me, but take your first job seriously because when you're just starting out, reputation matters. And if you fail on your first job, Upwork algorithms won't take it well. But also do choose your clients wisely because it's better not to work on some weird job that you feel might not be right than to take on this job and risk your reputation, time, money, whatever. And do remember that Upwork always takes the side of the customer. Yes, not fair, but this is how things are. The next tip I have for you is to stay active even while you work on the project. If you receive any invites, respond to those invites. And when you have a couple of minutes, do apply to new projects because this one will end and what will you do afterwards? Lose again, days or weeks on finding the new customer. No, just look for the new customer while you still work for this one. And another advice from an old timer here is to pick up a specific niche when starting out on Upwork. The more rare and high in demand skills you will be having on your profile, the more invites you will be getting from your potential customers and from the Upwork managers themselves. And by the way, if you don't know which direction you want to take, you might want to take a look at the guide of IT professions. It's down there in the description and it's absolutely free. You can grab it and use it and choose your direction. I hope this episode on how to get your first Upwork job has been helpful. Now click all the buttons you find below before you leave. And if you have any questions, throw them down in the comment section and I'll try to answer each of those. I always do. So if you're already subscribed, I'll see you in my next episode. And if you're not, you're missing out. See you soon.